One of my favorite parts of the pen hobby is getting to know a brand I've never heard of before and falling in love with it. And that's what happened with the pen in today's review. Hello everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit, I'm Matt Armstrong. As always, glad to have you back for another review, and I really need to come up with a better way to intro these videos, because that's getting a little repetitive. In any case, I want to welcome you back to another review. Uh, this is a real fun pen, one that I like a whole bunch, so I'm excited to get to show it to you. The pen for today's review is this little beauty. This is a the Stylo Art Taut, T-A-U-T, um, I bought this in the LA Pen Show in February of 2016 um, from Stylo Art directly. Stylo Art is a Japanese company, and I'll, I've got to look up the names because I keep forgetting it. Uh, Mr. Motish, M Motoshi Kazuno, excuse me, Mr. Motoshi Kazuno and his wife Shuko were there at the pen show um, showing their lovely, lovely handmade pen creations. And uh, I had a chance to use someone else's Stylo Art pen earlier. I think, uh, France, thank you very much if you're watching. Uh, earlier in the day, he let me use it, and I kind of fell in love with the pen. Just a beautiful, gorgeous material, great craftsmanship. And uh, I kept going back by their booth over and over and over again. It's one of those things, take a little tangent here. When I go to pen shows, I have a, a this thing where the first day at the pen show, the first in the morning, I don't buy anything unless it's something I know I need to have right now. And I kind of go through the, you know, meander through the show a couple times, maybe go back to my room, take a little nap, go out to lunch. And if there's something I can't get out of my mind, then I go back and buy it. And this was one of those. I just could not get this pen out of my mind. And I stopped by their booth probably four or five times. And finally, the last day of the show on Sunday, I broke down and bought it and love the thing. So let's go through the design. This is the Stylo Art Taut. It is made of Japanese curly ash. Um, and then the ash wood is dyed green and then coated with Rushi lacquer. So it's a, it's a pretty labor-intensive process. Uh, the pen is turned by hand and then um, and, and shaped, and then he goes ahead and uh, has it dyed and um, and then urushied. And it's, I mean, the craftsmanship is just superb. I love the feel of urushi lacquer. I've never had urushi over wood before. I like it. It's it feels very nice in the hand. You get that warmth of urushi, but you the added warmth of wood. Um, normally, urushi is laid over the top of ebonite, um, but then urushi over wood is just stunning. Um, it's you know kind of rounded wood top here, almost straight sides. Got a slight bow in the middle there. Uh, of the, of the thing, and then a little section here, finial here, it's not technically a finial, it's just a, a slightly narrower, narrower spot, onto which you can post the cap. Uh, it is hard to tell you exactly how many turns it takes to undo, because there's no clip. This is one of my few clipless pens. Um, and underneath, you find out what makes the Stylo Art pens kind of unusual. So instead of making his own sections, what uh, Mr. Kazuno does is he uh, he will basically turn pens and then he will pre-thread them to use the sections from either Pilot, Sailor, or Platinum pens. So he buys the section, feed, section, nib, unit all together, and then he makes his pens to fit those uh, that full section. So this is a section from a pilot nib. This is the number 10 nib, 14 karat gold, and it's a medium number 10 size nib, you know, kind of standard feed here, standard pilot section. It's really quite lovely. Um, and then the, you know, the, the cap comes, or the, the barrel comes off, and he's threaded the inside of the barrel with that plastic, you know, there uh, to, to 
go into the section. Now, this is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it will accept any of them, but it also accepts, or it, it does accept the Con 70, which is the largest of them. This converter is a real pain in the rear end to clean, but it's probably, despite that, it is probably my favorite of the Pilot converters uh, because it has a, a pretty significant ink capacity. Uh, you know, obviously, the color and the pattern of the material is just stunning. Um, it really is a lovely, lovely material. It seems to be exceptionally well made, and it's very light. Um, this, and we'll get to that when we get to the measurements, but it is very light. Now, there is a little bit of a downside, and you can see it probably, let's see if I can find it right here. Um, being wood, it is prone to picking up scratches and, and gouges a little bit more than other materials would be. Um, this is a pen I don't feel comfortable taking with me in a soft-sided case. I really want this in a hard-sided case if, if I'm going to take it somewhere. So I find that this pen does stay home a little bit more than some of the other pens that I might take with me to work or, you know, out and about, simply because I love the finish and the look of this pen so much, I would feel bad taking it with me and, uh, and damaging it. So that is the design overview of the pen. Let's go ahead and do some comparisons and some measurements, and then I want to show you how this beauty writes. So here is the Stylo Art Taut. And then by comparison, we have the Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Pelican M800. So size-wise, uh, a little bit shorter than the M1000, 800, but wider, at least in the body of the pen, uh, the, the section is a little bit narrower than the section of the 800. And then if you want to compare it to some less expensive pens, here are the Lamy All-Star. Sorry. One of the downsides of a pen with no clip is it tends to roll around a, a little bit. The Twisby Eco and the Pilot Metropolitan for size comparisons there. And then in terms of measurement, we've got 138.8 millimeter length. Uncapped, you're looking at 127.4 millimeters, so very comfortable in the hand, long enough for me to use unposted. Uh, but it does post, as I mentioned earlier, which is unusual for pens made out of wood. That doesn't often happen. Um, it is a little on the long side uh, at 167 millimeters when posted. However, this cap is so light I hardly notice that it's there at all. So this is a pen I really don't mind using posted. I rarely do because I don't need to, but I, if I do post it because I don't want to lose the cap or I don't want it to roll off the desk, um, I've got no problem with it because it's so light it doesn't, it doesn't mar the balance of the pen at all. Uh, the widest, the middle of the section is 1.1 millimeters. Then you've got the widest point of the barrel, which is 15.3 millimeters, and the widest point of the cap, which is going to be 17.6 millimeters. And it's only 15 grams uncapped, 20 grams capped or posted. So the cap itself is only five additional grams. So it is a very light pen, as I've said before, and I like that. I, I like a light pen that still feels like it has a little bit of heft to it. And this this material with the, the heavier nib down at the bottom really does strike a really nice balance in the hand. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing. And before we do the writing, I did want to just say a quick, first of all, a quick thank you. I'm trying something new. Uh, check down in the show notes below here on the video for the link to the Google form where you can submit quotes for me to use in, in these videos. Uh, I've got tired of looking up quotes every time I did a video. So I'd love to get some ideas from you guys about what some of your favorite quotes are. So if you've got a favorite quote, go ahead and, and follow that link and submit it. And I may use it in a future video and, uh, and do a little call out for you in the video itself. So uh, that is what we're doing today. So let's dive in. Today, we are doing a review of the Stylo Art... Hot, and that is in Japanese ash. Dyed green and Irushi lacquered. We're using a 14 karat gold pilot number 10 medium nib. 
And as I mentioned, uh, Mr. Kazuno's pens, he, he can make them to accept sections from Pilot, Platinum, or Sailor. So if you have a, a personal preference, all three of those nib maker, all three of those manufacturers make superb nibs. Um, my personal favorite is probably, it's a real close tie be between all three of them, frankly. I like the the Sailor nibs, the 21 karat Sailor nibs, a little bit better um, on the larger nibs, like on my Classic Pens LB5. For the smaller nibs, both Pilot and Platinum are neck and neck. I tend to like the adjustment on Platinum's nibs just a tiny bit more, um, but you'd be hard pressed to call one or the other better. They both do superb jobs in how they adjust and, and, and uh, polish their nibs. Uh, and then the ink for today is Tecker ink. And that's the custom ink I did a review of a little while back. And, and this color is aubergine. And just because I have it here and I can, I should probably have done this ahead of time. The hex code for this ink is, is um, 492546, in case you ever wanted to get it. This uh, aubergine color that they made for me is this really cool combination between purple, red, and brown. And it sits like right in the middle of those. So it's, depending on the light, it can look purple, it can look red, it can look kind of brown. It's it's a really nice ink, and like the, the emerald green that I reviewed earlier, it behaves wonderfully. I'll probably do a full review of it at some point in the future, but uh, really like this ink. Okay, and we are on a Rhodia dot pad, as we always are. I did switch up to a, a spiral-bound Rhodia dot pad. I noticed those over at the Goulet pen site recently and thought, that's got to be so much better than the staple-bound. I'm, I'm not a big fan of staple-bound notebooks. So, anyway, today's quote actually, before we do that, comes uh, from longtime viewer Rob Pina. So thank you, Rob, for providing the quote for today. I am uh, I'm currently working on a blog post that ties in very closely to this. Uh, that back in February, I posted a review of my experience at the LA Pen Show. It wasn't the best experience, I have to admit, but the way I handled it was not my proudest moment. And uh, I want to write, I'm in the middle of a blog post that should be up on the, the site soon about some follow-up and uh, how, my, how my perspective has changed with a little bit of, of distance. Um, now, one thing, uh, Rob, if you're watching this, uh, you had mentioned that this quote was attributed to Ambrose Bierce, and I did a little bit of research online. It actually looks like it never, there's no evidence that he ever said that, and the first recorded instance of this quote being, uh, being uttered was actually by Groucho Marx in 1954. Random fact. So, um, just, uh, just in case you're curious why I put Groucho Marx instead of Ambrose Bierce, I, I like to do a little bit of research and find out more about these quotes and these people. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, um, back to the writing. Now, if you've used a pilot nib, um, you know that they are generally really quite lovely nibs. This is no exception. Now, normally, I find Japanese nibs tend to be a little heavy on the feedback side. Um, for my personal tastes. Uh, I will say that this is, without a question, the single smoothest pilot nib I've ever used. It's a medium. It writes a little bit wider than a lot of Japanese mediums I've tried, but it is still very much on the fine side for a medium. It is not a, a big, 
big, wide, medium line. So um, I would I would say this is probably just right around the size of uh, a Western fine, maybe a tiny bit wider. Uh, that being said, man, is this a really nice rider. It's wet, but not overly so. And we can do the, the wetness test here. So it's wet, but not overly so, and it is... Um, it's smooth, but there's still just enough feedback that you know what's going on on the page. It doesn't feel like it's about to slip off the edge of the paper. The nib does not have a lot of give to it. You, there's just a little bit of, uh, of line variation or, or flow variation that you can coax out of it if you, if you write with a bit of pressure. But for the most part, this nib just really floats across the paper nicely. Um, you'll notice that as I'm holding this pen, I'm going to cover up most of the writing to focus the camera here. I'm actually holding it a little bit higher, um, as, is, as is my tendency, and even though I'm on the threads, I don't feel them at all. This is such a comfortable pen to hold. Uh, this is one of, has become one of my favorites to go to for really long writing because it's light. There's just a hint of feedback so I can feel the nib on the paper. I don't need to put any pressure on the nib to get it to write. It can just float across the paper, but it's really comfortable in the hand. It, this is ergonomically, this is probably one of my favorite pens. I really, I really find that I like this pen a lot uh, to write with for long writing sessions. Reverse writing, it's scratchy, but very fine. That's certainly an, an extra fine, almost to the point of needlepoint. Um, having used a needlepoint just this weekend, actually, at the Seattle-ish Pen Posse meetup, um, I feel comfortable saying that's that's pretty close to a needlepoint right there. Um, yeah, I have to say, this is a really nice, lovely pen. It's a great writer. It's a lot of fun to use. It's comfortable in the hand. It's pretty much anything you could ask for out of a pen. I, I have no complaints about it. Now, the um, Stylo Art is a small company. It's basically uh, Mr. Kazuno and, uh, who makes these pens. And, uh, and then he will send them off for, he's got some with Raden or, um, you know, there's one, there's one in his collection that was used Raden, which, which is the, um, the inner shell of the abalone. So it's got that nice mother of pearl swirl to it and quail egg inlaid onto the surface and then coated with a rushi. Um, so uh, some of that finish work he'll send off to other people to have them do the finish work, but but he makes the pen bodies himself, as is my understanding. And uh, so this is a handmade um, small batch item, and as such, it's going to be a little on the pricey side. This was $400, um, which is going to be pretty expensive. Granted, it's very highly figured curly ash, um, which is going to be valuable wood and the process to dye and arushi and hand make. So yes, it's a lot. Um, in my mind, it's worth it because uh, I've paid a whole lot less or a whole lot more and gotten a whole lot less from some pens. Um, I would much rather pay $400 for a handmade pen of this quality with a nib that writes this well than um, then pay a whole lot more for something I don't like anywhere near as much. So, you know, if you've got the money, I can highly recommend the Stylo Art uh, pens. They're really wonderful. And in my mind, the real measure of, does this pen interest me? Is this a good pen? Is, am I interested in getting another one? And the answer to that question is yes. So if I am able to make it to the DC show in 2016 in August, uh, I do know that Stylo Art is planning on being there, and I plan on stopping by their table because I want to see what they bring with them next time. So, in any case, thank you so much for watching. This has been my review of the Stylo Art Tot in Japanese curly ash, dyed green, and coated with Arushi lacquer with the Pilot Number no. 10 14 karat medium gold nib. Uh, thanks again to Rob Pina for providing the quote for today's review, and a special thanks to all of Pen Habit's sponsors who have made this season possible. This will be the last pen review of the season. Coming up, we'll have a couple more videos about uh, the top 10 and that kind of stuff, the end of the season stuff, but uh, it has been a wonderful season. I've gotten to use some great pens and play with some great inks and make a lot of great friends 
in this wonderful community of ours. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.